It's the Abundance Show with your coach, Sean Q. Your weekly hangout with master coaches, thought leaders, and elite healers here to share with you powerful techniques you can use to change the world. Now, live on tape from Colorado Springs, it's Sean Q. Hello and welcome to The Abundance Show. I'm your host, Sean Q, and I am curious, have you ever felt uncomfortable meeting new people? Maybe because you're an introvert, like I am, or maybe because you even feel socially awkward, uh, or maybe you've just wanted to get inside an influencer circle. You wanted to build a relationship with someone that you knew would open doors that would be life-changing for you. Well, in today's episode, I am interviewing a really great friend, Alex Dumas, who is a master coach and who will be sharing how you can master the lost art of human connection. He is also the vice president of the BIPOC Coach Collective, and I am so excited to have him on in today's episode. We're also going to explore today why I believe coaching is the most powerful skill set on the planet for changing lives and change in the world. Now, if this is your first time watching, uh, go ahead and put hashtag live if you're on the, on the team live. If you're on the rerun, go to put hashtag team rerun. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. I'm Sean Q, your host and facilitator. I am an abundance coach, a seven figure launch strategist and a digital marketer. And I'm so excited to have you here today. Go ahead, take a moment. Wherever you're at, maybe you are, you know, maybe you're making breakfast and you have me kind of in the corner, or maybe you're watching and you're super excited, you got your pen and your notepad, or maybe you are on your way to work, or maybe you're even listening to this while your boss is like, like uh, in, in the office and you're like listening to it on, on silent so you don't get caught. That's totally fine. Go ahead, take a moment and just take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Go ahead and center yourself. Feel the air in your lungs and the heart that's beating in your chest and the brain and awareness and consciousness that's working for you. Oprah Winfrey, when she quit and retired from her show, she made a decision, I am gonna start a whole network. I'm gonna level up and create the own network, right? Oprah Winfrey Network, OWN. And so she went all in and she's like, I got a lot of star power. A lot of people love me. We have a huge audience ratings. People are gonna love OWN. And in one year, her ratings dropped like crazy. No one was watching. So what happened? Well, she made a decision. She said, you know what? I cannot do this on my own. I am drowning. And yet I have a deep desire to see this happen. I have this big dream that I am absolutely in love with and it absolutely has to get birthed out. So what did she do? She went to other networks, found producers and directors and executives from those networks and said, coach me. Help me. Unlock in me what I need in order to make this work. Oprah Winfrey hired a coach. Serena Williams, incredible tennis player. It was on top of her game. She has practiced for years since she was a little girl, a child. And yet, she pays millions of dollars as a professional athlete for someone to coach her so she can get, how she describes it, just 1% better at hitting, at running, at sprinting, at positioning, at understanding the game, at understanding strategy. This incredible athlete pays millions of dollars for just 1% improvement. What's incredible is every single time I try something new, we have a, an incredible summit coming up. It's called the Abundance Now Summit. I have never done a summit before. And so what did I do? I said, instead of trying to figure out how I can do this, 
I'm going to ask myself, who do I know that can help me do this? Who, not how. That is the power of coaching, is finding a who, finding someone who can come alongside you, partner with you, and help you see the world differently. See the possibilities that are there. My coach for our summit helped unlock the potential of having sponsors support our event. We have over $40,000 generated in just 30 days for the summit we're about to host in March. Right now it's February 2nd, I think. So all the way in March, we have two months until the event and we have already generated half of what we need to hit six figures for this first launch. I did not know anything about summits or sponsorships, but it was a coach who spoke possibilities, who asked powerful questions, and who helped me see the world of summits differently. I'm a big believer that you will never maximize your potential in any area of your life without a coach. Catch that. You will never maximize any area of your life without a coach. There will always be untapped potential that will be yearning, begging, that will be a long lost distant whisper asking you to level up. And it will remain a whisper until you hire someone, find someone, partner with someone who can say, I will see what you are doing and celebrate it with you. And I will encourage you and push you into your potential. I'm curious, if you're watching this live or on the rerun, let me know, have you ever worked with a coach who really helped you see what's possible? Who really helped you unlock true potential that you didn't even know was there? That is the power of coaching. You're headed in one direction and then you partner with a coach and you go a completely different direction that you didn't even know was there. A door becomes available. An opportunity becomes in front of you, grows in front of you. You are more powerful than you can imagine. You are more capable than you can imagine. There is so much more ahead of you than you can imagine. And if you're listening to this and you're a coach, I want to remind you and reignite the spark in you that you change lives forever. There are coaching sessions I've had two, four, ten years ago that still resonate today, that still are reflected in the choices and decisions and behaviors and identity I hold today. I want to encourage you. If you're listening to this and you're a coach, in your very next session, show up as if you're there to change their world, as if you're there to help create a space where they can see the world differently. And if you're not a coach, but this is sounding exciting, like, oh, that's what I wanna do for the rest of my life. I want to do that. I wanna coach powerfully and get paid to do it. I wanna be a professional elite master coach. I wanna to encourage you, stick around. Here's the good news. You're already in the circle. You're already watching The Abundance Show. You're already a part of a network of incredible people who are here to encourage you. On top of that, you can go through our School of Abundance. It's a coaching certification program that will train you and help you be the abundance coach that you know you're called to be. Go ahead in the chat right now. Simply type in, abundance and we'll send you all the details all the information about it it's opening up in april but i want to encourage you if you're a coach i believe coaches change the world that's why we are on a mission to empower a hundred thousand coaches in the next 10 years because we know when we empower the leaders the coaches of the world oh man the ripple effect of that is endless and that brings me to my guest who is an incredibly masterful and elite coach. 
I've known him for several years now, and every single time I listen to one of his podcasts, I watch one of his live streams, I read one of his posts on Facebook, it blows me away with just how much power he shows up with. I'm really excited. Please help me welcome up Alex Dumas. Hey, how are you, my friend? Sean Q, man. I am wonderful and blessed. Really grateful to be here and grateful to be speaking with you, man. It's always fun talking with you. I love it. You know, something I always hear you say is something to the effect of like, welcome in and accept the weird. Accept who you are. Accept the, accept the awkward. Tell me a little bit about why that's so important and what, how... You're so bold and confident being you and showing up so powerfully as you, just uniquely you. Yeah, great question. That comes from a long line of not feeling that way, of not being that person, of not accepting that weirdness within me. As a kid growing up, I'm, I'm from New York originally. I live in North Carolina now for the past few years. And growing up, I shared a little bit of this with you off, off camera, but I was always kind of out of step with things. I'm the youngest of four kids in my family. The closest one to each to me is six years apart. So there's always kind of just not quite, not quite in sequence, right? And then my my parents, they wanted me and my siblings to have the best education. So we would go to schools, private Catholic schools, predominantly, predominantly in white classrooms. So I would be maybe one, two, maybe three faces that look like me in the room. So that already just physically, right, that visual of, well, I'm not, I don't really fit in here. And so there's all these places of just being out of sync, out of step. And I would create my own little games with myself, my own little world, my own little areas of where I could create my identity. And I'm so thankful for that because what people would say back then was like, man, you're so weird. How come you're not like this? Or you should be more like that. And what, what's going on? What's wrong with you, right? That was the... That, that was what was put upon me. And now I realize like, man, that is one of my best superpowers to just be me and embracing that and being fun with that and really settling into that. And when I see that with clients where they're, they're trying to fit into a mold, I'm like, listen, you're, you're brilliant as you are. You, I look at you like Michelangelo looked at a slab, right? There's David inside of that. All he needs to do is just chip away at, all the stuff that isn't David. Well, that's what I do with my coaching and maybe a little conventional, maybe unorthodox, but like, that's the game I play. That's fun for me. And that's what lights me up and being weird. I mean, why be normal? Being normal is abnormal in my, in my book. Hmm. So you mentioned when you work with clients, you really identify how they're not sitting well within themselves, within their own body, within their own personality and you see them as this stone, uh, as Michelangelo saw David and just chipping away at everything that's not them. Um, you know, what I've often discovered is there's a lot of uh, social pressure. There's a lot of expectation, family expectation, cultural expectation that gets put on us that we begin mm -hmm. to wear. That's not really truly us. Mostly, be and we accept it mostly because we want to be normal, quote unquote, right? We want to fit in. And what I've noticed about my own journey is it, whenever I try to fit in, I always feel like I don't ever belong, truly. And so I'm curious, how would you, how do you help your clients? What are some of the, like the, the frameworks or the methodologies where you help them identify, hey, this is actually not you. This is something that's been given to you and that you've just accepted. And it's actually time to let go of it. Yeah, great question. Well, one of the, opportunities that I see available is something that you blessed me with many years ago. And you may not remember this. This is something when I was part of the Clients with Purpose program, you said something really simple and really profound. And it was simply this, tell me more, right? Giving somebody an opportunity to express themselves, not me from my coaching, be the expert or be the master of your life. Like, hey, tell me more about that. What's going on here? What do you see? And they start to say it. And then all of a sudden, 
I'll reflect it back to them, right? It's not necessarily a technique, but sometimes this happens. So I want to share with you this one story. I was working with this woman who was in the military and she was looking to get promoted into a new position, whatever. And she started sharing all these insecurities. Like, you know what? I'm not this, I'm not that, blah, 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 blah. And I asked her, let me slow down for a second. Let me tell you something real quick. I started reading up all these credentials. She told me that she, that she is somebody who in the line of combat is the person that people go to for, for, for reassurance, for calm in the storm. I started reading up all these different things and I asked her, which one of these people is real or not? Like, who's the real one? Because you have these two things, right? This insecure, this scared, this fearful, resentful, I'm not sure, uncertain person. And then this confident person who rallies people together, who, who holds space for people. Which one of them is going to be able to get this promotion? And, you know, if you could see a lightning bolt come out of the sky, <laughs> that's what happened for her. She caught this insight. She's like, oh, my goodness. I've never seen that before. I've never seen myself like that before. Well, that's in a nutshell what I do with people. I just help them, right? Glasses on, glasses off. Like, oh, I, I can see. I got it. And it's a beautiful gift. And I'm curious. So what I'm hearing in that is really the power of distinction is, okay, are you this or are you that? Right? Is, is the person you're describing, you have this goal, you want to get this promotion, is the person who's capable of getting that promotion this version of you that you've accepted or is it this version of you yeah. and giving them permission almost to step back into that what are some of the common things you've noticed clients begin to latch on to that maybe they're not even aware of maybe it's subconscious beliefs or like the story they're telling themselves what are yes. some of those things that you've noticed with clients yeah, that's a great word you said right there, story, right? Because we're all authors and we can sometimes fall into auto, what I call like automatic or the default setting. I was working with this young woman and she was sharing how she wanted to grow her coaching practice, but she wasn't sure that she was deserving of money, right? Worthy of like charging these fees, the saying high numbers, things like that. And back again, it's like, Let's play the game. I mean, who do you need to be? How do you create yourself? There's nothing wrong with you as you are, right? I want to start with that premise. That's the foundation. There's nothing wrong with you. Now, for you to achieve what you want, we have to elevate that. We have to raise up to that real frequency of who you are. And that's fun for me. And the, the resistance comes from these stories of what my mom said, what my dad said, you know, for me in my life, my story was I'm insignificant, I'm invisible, I'm not important. These are the things, this is the the story that was running in my head, right? I think of my life like a movie theater. I'm in the movie theater and all I'm doing is sit and rewind. And I forgot that being in the present means you press play. I get to play, I get to be where I am, but we got to let go of that rewind button of I made this mistake. I did this wrong. Uh, I was I was wrong in this scenario. And now everything's messed up. And this is it's this self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, you get to write a new prophecy. You have the pen in your hand. Start writing. Hmm. So what I'm hearing is that for you and for a lot of people, and I'm curious if you're watching this live or on the rerun, if this is also what you've experienced is we have these stories that we tell ourselves over and over, I'm not important, um, you know, I'm insignificant, etc. And we press rewind on that mm -hmm. story over and over and over. And rather than pressing play and really being in the moment, how do we do that? Because it sounds so easy. <laughs> and maybe it is, uh, or maybe there's a journey there. How do we go from pressing rewind over and over and over to I'm writing a new story? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, one of the best examples comes to my mind with my kids, right? And they may be saying something like, oh, I'm afraid of this. I'm scared of that. And I'll ask them, well, what is that thing? Like, speak it out, like say it, right? I think that's one of the first important steps is speaking that out because we speak what we create, but also I can also take power away from it. Oh, I'm scared of the boogeyman underneath my bed. Well, okay, say it. Like, I'm scared of the boogeyman. And started saying it a couple of times, like, well, that sounds a little silly. 
Like, there's no boogeyman in my bed or in the closet, right? We want to reduce this energy that we put into it of, this is the monumental scary thing. Like, well, what is that thing? And then we start looking at this process of forgiveness of, how do I forgive myself for even thinking that or allowing myself to believe that? And then, well, my favorite part is, and you mentioned it earlier about possibilities, the game of possibilities. Like, well, what's on this other side? If we weren't scared of the boogeyman, what would you do? Who would you be? What would happen? What would be different in your life? Well, and then they start going through this list. And then all of a sudden they see that, wow, what I want or what would be different is way better than this fear that I'm holding on to. And like my fists are balled up right now for those who aren't listening, who can't see this. You can't receive if your hands are clenched, if you're closed off. What if we receive? What if we're open to these different possibilities? Mm. You know, as you're saying that, you know, uh, I'm scared of the boogeyman. I'm scared of the boogeyman. You know, I started hearing in my own head, that boogeyman's a punk. And it, it kind of made me a little bit more confident. I could take care of that boogeyman if he even did dare to come out from under the bed. And so it's almost like you re-energize who you really are and you steal or rob the energy from the fear, from the insecurity, from the imposter syndrome, from the comparison as you speak it out. And it, it's almost as if you're giving yourself access to your thoughts in a more powerful way, to your, to your thinking. And I think that's what the power of coaching and what I've seen you do really well is you ask, like, tell me more, what else? These powerful questions that allow you and the client to see the thinking that's going into the feeling of fear or insecurity. Can you speak a little bit to that, to identifying the thought patterns that lead to either people closing up or people being open to possibilities? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, what comes to mind for that type of answer is looking at what is it that we don't want in our lives right now, right? If we are fearful of something, so we'll go back to this boogeyman example. I don't want the boogeyman to pop up. Well, all of a sudden, your mind now becomes consumed of, I don't want that, I don't want that, and guess what's showing up? <laughs> Nine times out of 10, boogeyman showing up. Why? Because I'm a big believer. I'm a, a believer of God, Jesus, that God as the master creator created us in his likeness, in his image. So we are master creators on earth. You know, I have abundance in my veins. This is my birthright. If you cut me open, abundance, creativity, all that should pour out. You might look at it and see, it was blood and veins and bone. No, this that's abundance. That's all that flowing through me. And the the process of that really is in the mind. It's like, man, am I thinking about that? Am I seeing that? Think about when you want a new car or something like that, right? I want a, 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 a black blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to name drop any cars. All of a sudden, as soon as you start thinking about it, you start seeing on the road. It's like, man, there's a black, there's another black car. There's another one. It's all over the place because why? It's important for me. So I start to look for it. Same thing with clients. Man, I need a client today. Oh, there's opportunities here. There's opportunities there. This process is really simple. It's just about what's our time, energy, and attention focused toward. Am I focused on the fear? Am I focused on this big, scary thing? Or am I focused on what's going to be exciting for me? What lights me up? What What's inspiring to me? And inspiration is going to pull me forward versus trying to push my way and get to something. I'm going to come from a place of, love inspiration abundance service that's that's the fun game for me and i think that's available for everybody and it's just a matter of are we willing to slow down enough to see it hmm. are we willing to slow down enough what do you mean by that slow down our thoughts slow down our our pace not like in the physical like slow turtle but <laughs> I call this place Someday Island. And Someday Island's a nice place, it's lovely. You know, someday when I get this, then I'll be, right? When I lose this weight, someday, then I'll be happy. When I find this relationship, someday, then I'll be complete. Well, Someday Island is 
I have no problem with goals, with things being projected. But when we live in this place, oh, you know what, Sean? It's, it's I've had a really tough day. But you know what? Someday my prince will come. Someday my princess will come. I'll be happy then. Well, I like to live in this place called Now Island because this is the only thing I can control or I have at least access to. So I want to be happy now. <laughs> I choose to be abundant now, regardless of circumstances, regardless of the material things. That's not going to complete me. We've seen it time and time again with take your most famous celebrities. They have it all on paper, right? They 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 have the looks, they have the cars, they got the 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 admiration. And what happens? Well, they kill themselves. They overdose on drugs. They go to prison. They, all these crazy things happen, right? On the outside, that surface, they were on Someday Island. They look great. Well, now it's they're empty. They're unfulfilled. So I'm. I played a game with my clients like let's let's work on now because this is it hmm. i really like that island or um someday island versus now island uh and really pulling ourselves slowing ourselves down and pulling ourselves back into right now what are we deciding are we deciding to be happy are we deciding to be full of abundance and creativity? Are we deciding to be the version of ourselves that's confident, that can get that promotion, that can do X, Y, and Z? So powerful. Um, I know that you are, like me, an incredible nerd. I mean, I see Batman back there. I see Thanos back there. Um, <laughs> how, how do you, and, and I, I remember hearing you early on say, growing up, you always felt like the odd one odd one out how mm -hmm. have you really grounded yourself in who you are um and and how how can clients begin to really ground themselves in who they are while identifying like oh this makes me unique like how do we how do we identify the unique factor for ourselves yeah so great question for me as a youngster i spent a lot of time just thinking about what i'm thinking about observing people and recognizing that yeah, I'm a little bit off, I'm a little bit weird, but how can I use it to my advantage? Like, how can I use this gift right now? And I didn't have that now thinking when I was young adult, when I was a teenager, because I wanted to get to Someday Island. I wanted to be there versus what I'm experiencing now. And what really has served me has been coaching, working with other coaches, working with you for some time, working with people learning from people and starting to see that, oh, I, I don't do it this way or I don't play that way. And that's what I love about coaching because as some people would say like, oh, it's unregulated and this and that, but I'm like, I can do whatever I want. I can build my business exactly how I want. And that's really a gift for me. That's a blessing because if I was trying to be Sean Q, it wouldn't work, right? You are the only person who's had your experiences. You're the only person who's had your education everything right and for me i look at the same way like yeah i have all these gifts i have all these talents and there's recurring things that keep coming up there would be things like yeah I, i'm i'm always showing kindness i'm always supporting people i'm a cheerleader if somebody does something great i'm sharing it i'm rooting them on because that's what i recognize for me whatever i see in somebody else is most likely a reflection of me whether it's the thing i like or whatever thing i don't like and to answer your question, I think the game for me has been a path of forgiveness and acceptance, accepting that I'm this way. I am who I am. People that love it will love it. People who don't, that's fine. I love you too. I'm happy to go my way. You go your way. And I'm not for everybody. You're not for everybody. But the people who are on this team who are in my orbit, they know that, man, this guy's got my back. Like, if we're going into battle, this dude is like the one going with me. Hmm. You know what I've noticed as well is that's a very abundant perspective is there's enough room for all of us to be uniquely who we are. And I have seen a lot of coaches be, you know, I, I know a couple of people who use the superhero trope to help their clients step into the superhero version of themselves they do this fun exercise where they literally create a superhero uh i have one client who has them actually create a costume order the costume <laughs> take a picture their client takes a picture of themselves in that costume so they have a reminder with them all the time of this is who i'm 
going to be. I have another client who's a photographer turned coach, um, and she now uses photography in her coaching. She'll say, hey, bring me a picture that really speaks to who you were before the age of 10. And then bring me a picture before 20 and then 30 and 40. Bring me these defining pictures and we'll coach around that person and what shows up in those pictures. And then I have another person, another friend who just does retreats and they say, we're going to do a four day retreat, just one on one, go into the, uh, a cabin in the woods and we'll do some powerful coaching. And I think that's so incredible. I'm curious to hear from you. What is it like to be coached by you? And what, what are some of the unique ways that you put yourself into your coaching? Yeah, thank you. And first of all, I love that superhero idea. I mean, you grab that because that is that is brilliant. I love that. I love that. Oh, man. What is it like to work with me? I would say it's really just an opportunity of, of games. I'm I'm you know, I'm in the hoodie right now. I'm, I'm I was ready for this interview. I'm I'm going, it's game time for me. And that's what it is when I'm with somebody else is this really safe, sacred space as, as, you know, I can be goofy and silly and all these things. But when I recognize someone is across from me and they have a challenge, they have an issue, like, all right, I'm, I'm with them. Like, I'm locked in. Let's go. Let's, let's get to the heart of it. And I would say it's a combination of these things of like the push and pull, right? You know, one of the best coaches that I ever had wasn't, an executive coach or business coach. This is when I was boxing. Um, he's passed away now. This man, John Carter. He was just this tough, old school, get in your face, like just kind of rip you apart in front of people, but then educate you, teach you, guide you. Like, hey, this is what you're doing wrong. Your elbow needs to be here. You need to hold your hand up here. Oh, if you get this, if you need to start running, you need to stop eating so much salt with your food, right? I want somebody who will tell me the truth, whether I like it or not, whether I'm really ready for it or not. And I think that's what I bring to the table, not in a super confrontational way. I, I choose games because I want someone to have a choice. And most clients, they know once I ask them that question, they're like, oh, no. And I'm like, hey, you know, can I invite you to a game? They're like, oh, no. But on the other side of that, once that game is complete, it's like, man, thank you for that. That was awesome. This is what I needed. And sometimes it's not about giving people what they want, what they need. And the truth can be <laughs> tough to digest for people. But I love working with people that have big goals, big dreams, outrageous projects. That's what I usually call my coaching agreements. I, I think of a project and something that's tailor made for them. And we just create something fun. Hmm. When you say game, what do you mean by that? So this one gentleman I'm coaching, he is looking to grow his coaching business. And what I'm seeing with this and what he's expressed as well with his resistance is being in his head too much and, and trying to be impressive, as I say. Right. And I said, I was listening to him like, all right, well, let's let's try this on for size. Let's play this game. How about you can't talk about yourself for the whole session or something like that? What if it would just be you just question, 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 question? Because what he started expressing, what I picked up on is like this idea or this fallacy from coaches. And, and I, I had this at the start, too. Of I need to be more impressive than the client. I need to be on the pedestal. I need to be better than them. Why would they pay me if I'm you know, not as good as I think I am? Well, it's really never about you. It's about them. So let's play a game. Stop talking about yourself. Okay, I'll try that. Sure enough, a couple of days later, he's like, hey, you know what? I created a new client. All right, let's, let's do it again. <laughs> Another game we played was he was talking about he wants to create a group program and he's had it in his mind for a few weeks and you know he and he said the magic buzzword to me, to me he said you know i could probably do this in two days all right game on i want you to do this in two days i invite you to do that would you play yes i'll play all right so you talked about this is what you need to do S invite x amount of people blah 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 and he reached out to me and said hey guess what i invited this many people so far i'm on track i'm gonna invite more and this and that 
So it's not this big, heavy, gotta do it thing. It's like, hey, can we just ease into it? Like, what's one small thing? What's a really small game we can play? And people love games. As a kid, you play tag with somebody, it's, <laughs> tag, you're it. No, you're it. And we're, we're going, right? It's not this, hmm, how do I feel about this game? Sean Q tagged me. Uh, am I worthy of being tagged? Uh, no, we just get on the field. Let's go. Let's play. Hmm. I love how fun that is and how much joy and how light it is to do the work in front of you because it doesn't feel like work and it's not work. It's, it's play. It's fun. Uh, yeah. You mentioned also the power of telling the truth and boldly and courageous truth. Tell me a little bit about the importance of that and why, why is that so important? Yeah. In coaching... And in life in general, but we'll just use coaching as this context, telling the truth to somebody is our greatest opportunity for for expressing love. Because so often people in our lives, they love us, they care about us, but they may not tell us the truth, the full truth. And when you have somebody who's unbiased, like this unbiased third party as a coach who can see something within five minutes that you've been holding this story you've been holding on to for years, months, days, whatever it looks like, it shocks the system. I call it disturbing the disturbance, right? Somebody may come to me and be like, you know what? I, I want to do this and, and, and I haven't been able to. And I just come like, Hey, like, was that true? Like, what are we doing here? What are we talking about? This is what I see in you. This is what I experienced from you this version this fearful scared thing i'm not making it wrong but i'm not going to i'm not going to feed it i'm going to feed what i see what's right about you i'm going to feed the machine in you that can create greatness and abundance so i'm not i'm not here for i'm <laughs> don't take this the wrong way people but like i'm not here for like wimpy talk like we're here to be bold and courageous i mean i think of Anybody who's made any significance in life, right? We're in Black History Month, right? So if you think about Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Medgar Evans, I mean, countless heroes, uh, Harriet Tubman. There, there wasn't like this wishy-washy, like, yeah, you know what? I, I want to like free slaves. I want to like fight for civil rights. But you know, I'm sure they had insecurities and doubts, but they got people to lead. They have eyes are on them. So, hey, this is where we're going. I'm going to the mountaintop. Plymouth, land, Plymouth Rock in Atlanta, those, you know, all these different things. So how bold can we be and what are we committed to doing? Hmm. It is Black History Month, and I know you're the vice president of the BIPOC um, Coaches Collective. Tell me a little yeah. bit about the importance of diversity. I know me and my wife are incredible, um, incredibly passionate about this as well. And so you and I, before the show, we were uh, talking and discussing how there's such little representation in some of the biggest platforms and you see a banner for this new event and there's no diversity uh, or there's that one person, they're purposely photoshopped to be dimmer and they're still not diverse, but it's photoshopped to look like there's diversity, um, which blows my mind. I'm curious, if you can share a little bit about the work that you do with the BIPOC Coaches Collective and why that work is so important. Yeah, this work started in July, 2020. So I wanna give a quick shout out to the founder and president, Reem Labib Tyson. She had the foresight and the vision to say that there's not a space for us, you know, us collectively, you know, people of color. And this is not a, a black thing. This is Hispanic, Asian, you know, different, gender identifications, right? This is all inclusive and seeing a space that, well, wow, there's no, there's no real place for us. There's no, like, where, where is that? And she had the, the, the courage and the, the initiative to say, you know what, it doesn't exist. I'm going to create it. And so that started. And so many of the conversations were the same of one being, well, there's no space for us. What a refreshing place this is. Wow. I've never seen other people that look like me and that are in the same boat, right? It's a little bit of shop talk, but then starting to think about, well, 
we can build our own table, right? And then the coach shared with, with me like years ago about, you know, the frustration, the things we talked about, like, oh, this person, there's not enough representation on this banner. And they were like, well, why are you mad about that? Why don't you build your own table? And I was pissed off about that <laughs> for about two minutes. And then I caught the inside of it. I'm like, oh, she's right. Yeah, there's enough here for all of us. Hmm, how do we build our own table? And shortly after, I found this BIPOC, BIPOC Coach Collective community. They welcomed me in. And it wasn't necessarily a place I wanted to get to as far as like leadership. I just kept showing up. I kept showing up. I kept serving. I kept giving value and receiving value, right? It's not just give, 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 and give and take. It's, it's really reciprocal. And we just saw this opportunity for people who look like us and don't look like us, which is even more important to just amplify their voices. Like, let's speak who we are into the world because coaching for a long time, there was no word called coaching. It was leadership. And there's so much leadership in the world we've seen where if someone isn't taking the time to connect with somebody else or isn't taking the the real opportunity to value that person as a human, we see what happens. And I don't get like, into the politics of it, but you see what can come from a space where we're going to ignore this person. We're going to undervalue this community. We're going to underserve them. Well, no, that that's 2023. That game's over. We must unite. We must come together and build our own table. I love that. You know what, what you just said was hyper connected to what you said earlier, which is, you know, you go for the red, you want the red car. And then where do you see the red car everywhere? You wanted this community and you found this community. Uh, and it's the power of getting clear and identifying what you want and allowing things to show up and looking for those types of things that you want. And so um, why I obviously, you know, what's so powerful about representation and, and seeing yourself. Um, I'll give you a, a quick example. I, I watched the most recent Black Panther movie um, yeah. about when it first came out, two, three months ago. Um, and it was December, so about two months ago. And I can't tell you the joy and the emotionality, the strong emotion I felt in watching that movie and seeing one of the first Latin, Latino superheroes. And afterwards, I didn't realize what I was missing in not being able to see myself in the superheroes that I grew up with, like Superman and Batman and all yeah. of these incredible people, um, incredible superheroes. And then I saw myself in this character and I said, I know exactly who I want to be for Halloween next year. I know the exact shirt I want for Christmas. <laughs> I know like I saw myself and I felt so empowered just by seeing myself in a way I didn't even realize I hadn't felt before. And so as you're building this table, how can you encourage others who also want to see themselves? who also want tables built, how would you encourage someone to begin to begin that work? It's a great question. The first thing that comes to my mind is what you just mentioned earlier about being clear. What, what do I want? For me, I saw an opportunity of, I want to be around other people. I, I, when I share things in that community, I'm always saying, hey, family, right? It's not my group. It's not my, you can call a tribe, whatever, but like, you know, who are the people you want to spend time with? Who are the people that will challenge you, help you grow, but also will support you and nurture you and love you and, and, and get your back. So for those who are looking to build tables, I mean, you don't need any permission, right? You don't need the Alex stamp of approval or Sean Q approval. It's what do you want and then create it. And if you don't know how to do it on your own, then who is in your orbit? Who is in your network? Who around you? You said it yourself. 
I want to put together a summit. Never did a summit before. Who do I know? Do, 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 right? As soon as we start getting clear on that, all of a sudden, now the red, the red cars start popping up. All these people that I don't know where, how, and all of a sudden, they just, you can't stop it from coming. Just the abundance floods in. And the right people, they're always going to want to help. They're always going to want to help. You just have to ask. Ask and you receive, really. Mm, that's incredible. You talk about who, finding the help. Um, I want to show this picture real quick. Uh, this is of you. You're at an event, and I don't know if you can see it, but you're holding somebody's shoulders. They're holding your head, and there's such an intimate, powerful moment in front of a huge audience. Tell me a little bit about what's happening there. Yeah, I know exactly that picture I'm, I'm putting in my head right now. Yes, that was last January 2022 in Phoenix, Arizona. This event called The Ultimate Experience. The person who's who I'm embracing, it's uh, Steve Hardison. He was affectionately known as the ultimate coach in a lot of circles. And this is our first time meeting. We had communicated via Facebook. We've been friends for a year or so, maybe two years. And as me and uh, several other coaches were planning this event and organizing it, we had a lot of discussions with him. And this is our first time meeting face to face in person, like in the flesh. And especially coming out of the heels of COVID, this is my first live event that I had been to in several years. And he's not really a person that does a lot of these types of events. So, you know, we just saw each other. I mean, I wish they had the other picture up because as soon as I saw him, I, I scooped him up. I just picked him up, just airborne, just uh, bear hugged him. And then we just, we both had this moment and I'm, I'm so pleased that it was captured on camera. There's so much power there. And it is a lot of mutual respect, a lot of love and just excitement because of what was created this this event didn't exist 70 days pr prior to me and three other coaches put this event together in 70 days put 300 people in a room live streamed out to thousands of people i don't come from an event planning background neither do any of them but we found so many people to help us and create this with us and it was just it was a celebration it was just this release of wow we did this we're here, we're in this moment, we're present, we're in now island, and this is so fun to be in. Mm, that's amazing, and I think there's such a power. In your post, you said, you know, some people tell you not to meet your heroes. That's that's bunk, that's junk, because this person you met, they absolutely lived up to the who they really are. They were just authentic and true and, and the ultimate coach for you, and that was, that was an incredibly powerful moment. Um, Alex, I, I have 10 questions I want to ask you in the speed round. All right. Are you ready for speed round? All right, okay. I'm ready. All right, let's go. I love it. Okay, <laughs> these are really serious questions, and we really need to get to the to, to the root of this. Question number one: What is your favorite smell? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, cookies, cookies being baked. Yeah. Oh, any specific type of cookie? I mean, for baked ones, chocolate chips all day. But if we're talking about just cookies in general, like sock it to me with the Oreos. Let's go. I love it. So good. Okay, question number two. If you could go viral for anything, what would it be? For helping somebody, helping somebody transform their life. That would be fun for me. That would be what I would want to be remembered for if I care about that at all. But yeah. Hmm. I love it. Question number three. Um, who was your favorite teacher growing up? Man, a couple people popped to mind. I don't know if this guy is still alive or not. This is a high school teacher. His name was Dr. Frank McNiff when I was in high school. I remember him because he had a, an amputated thumb. So like he had like a half thumb thing and I would, it would always kind of weird me out. But he was one of these people who was really firm, really fair and wound up being a funny person. He was very straight demeanor, like you'd be intimidated, but you get to know him. He was really a funny guy. Mm, I love that. Um, what's your favorite dad joke? <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know if it counts as a dad joke, but I think I shared this with you. So New Year's Day, right? Or New, you know, New Year's is like, hey, I haven't seen you since last year. I mean, it's, like, it's the go-to, it's the layup. You got to use it. If you're a dad, 
always right it's always in your pocket i love it i love that you know i haven't even showered since last year <laughs> yeah it's, it's so corny it's so dumb so funny <laughs> um how did you find and land your last client found them through the interwebs and spent some time with them just having conversations so people call it discovery calls all this stuff and we just i just kept i just started helping them from the start Right. I didn't wait till, right, you know, the checks in the mail. Now I'm going to help you. Like, I'm going to help you at the start. And then they're eventually like, hey, I want to, like, spend more time together. All right. Well, this is how we do it. And you, Sean, I want to just give you your your flowers here. You helped me develop such a professional way of creating clients with I'm excited to work with them and they're excited to work with me. And just through that process, it's, it's really powerful. I appreciate that, Alex. That's amazing. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you? how much time do we have for that oh gosh i don't think this is the most embarrassing thing, but this is the one that comes to mind so as we were talking about that ultimate experience uh, steve hardison was coming up to talk and i was trying to put on a lavalier mic on him like clip it on and the dj started playing his intro song it's the rolling stones start me up and he just goes he just takes off and you see me in a picture i'm like oh ah, like trying to like hang on to him look like I was like trying to hang on to the back of his <laughs> his shirt and stuff. It just is, I'll send it to you. It's a really goofy picture. So nobody uh, makes fun of me about it. But like in that moment, I was kind of embarrassed. Like, oh no, I couldn't even get the mic on him. I look silly and he's dancing. I'm trying to look, I'm holding his microphone looking silly too, but it, it wound up being perfect. It was fun. That's amazing. Um, what makes you the most happy? Peace, peace, feeling love from my wife, Sarah, from my kids. Yeah, just peace with them, being relaxed with them. Mm, I love that. Um, who are three people that need to watch today's episode? Like by name or just like in like yeah. a... People you know that you're like, hey, they really should watch this. Oh, goodness gracious, that's so many people in my mind. I'll just put it like this. You, you, and you need to watch this. I love it. So fun. Um, okay. What is the greatest piece of advice you've ever received? This comes from Rich Lippin, and he said, slow down to speed up. Mm, slow down to speed up. I love it. Uh, and last question is, how can we find more of you? Yeah, you can connect with me on Facebook or LinkedIn. I'm at the Real Alex Dumas. Uh, the, my website, therealalexdumas.com. And if you are someone who identifies as BIPOC, you're in a coaching space or consultant, or you're looking to be, you can find me and my my group, my collective, BIPOCCC.org. That's where we're going to be playing a lot and and doing a lot of fun and powerful transformational work. So. You can find me there. I love it. Alex, oh my gosh, this is so good. Thank you so much for being part of uh, The Abundance Show and giving us some of your time today. No, thank you. Listen, thank you for inviting me. And there's nothing I had to give, right? I wanted to be here. You wanted to be here. We create this together. And I'm just grateful that we had this, this experience. Mm, thanks, man. All right. So. If you are live with us, go to Put Hashtag Team Live uh, and also share what your biggest insight from today's episode was. If you're on the rerun, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Uh, a couple of notes that I took is thinking about what you're thinking about. Taking time to slow down and asking yourself, how am I showing up? Am I thinking the way that the, that, that the best version of myself would think? Or am I thinking those wimpy thoughts like uh, Alex mentioned? We also explored a little bit about how to really tap into who you really are, your unique version of you, and giving yourself permission to not be normal, but to be genuine, authentic, weird even, and you. We also explored how to coach people powerfully by asking, what else? Tell me more. And by creating a space where we get access to people's thoughts, we reveal those thoughts, and we diminish the energy behind those thoughts. I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who's watching live with us. If you're watching right now, thank you so much for spending time with us. A huge special thank you to our sponsor, the Abundance Now Summit. Uh, this is a 50 plus 
experts in sessions specifically geared on how to powerfully coach with where you're gonna learn how uh, new coaching techniques and methods you can take immediately to your next session. You're gonna learn the science and psychology behind abundant living and all the hidden gremlins that may arise as you're on your way and how to overcome those and how to build your coaching business, all the sales and marketing strategies. Again, there's over 50 sessions with 50 experts here to support you. In order to sign up, all you gotta do is go to AbundanceNowSummit.com and you'll be able to get signed up. I wanna give one final huge thank you to our speaker and our guest today, Alex Dumas. What an incredible session. I'm Sean Q, your host and facilitator for The Abundance Show, and I will see you in the next episode.